Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tarr and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm playing Overwatch on my M1 Apple Silicon Mac and as you can see the frame rate is actually not too bad, especially because we're in the middle of a very dense fight. This is in complete contrast to footage that I recorded back in April 2021, where when you actually had a gunfight in the game and you had more than a couple of enemies on screen, the game would stutter quite frequently and it would be kind of not that enjoyable to play. It would work, but it would not be playable. But as you can see, this footage I have now is actually quite enjoyable I'd say even though the settings are turned down fairly low there's a tiny bit of stuttering but it's nowhere near as bad as it was back in April 2021. And this is all thanks to a set of optimizations and scripts which this Reddit user called Elegant Cantaloupe 8 has written up on the Mac Gaming subreddit. So this is a set of instructions to debloat Windows ARM and make sure that the operating system that the Parallels Virtual Machine is running is able to get this game running as efficiently as possible without all the kind of bloat of the ARM operating system that we don't need when we're gaming. So that includes things like removing OneDrive, removing the antivirus, and also removing the interface itself. So I've taken the liberty of copying these instructions to the Parallels article on the Apple Gaming Wiki website, and these instructions might change in the future as we discover new and better ways to implement this particular set of scripts. So if you don't already have Parallels and Windows ARM installed on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac, this article will be able to tell you everything you need to know, and there's also a video tutorial you can follow as well. I'll leave a link to these in the description. So the first thing that we want to do is install a piece of software called Park Control. And this is a Windows piece of software which controls when cores are parked or kind of put into a lower power mode. And the reason for this is because the Windows ARM operating system has some issues parking the cores at the incorrect times. So what we're going to do is basically manually disable the parking of the cores so that we have access to the maximum performance. So once we've installed this, we're just going to click disabled on all of these options here. And that's going to give us access to the full performance level. And also we're going to enable Bitsum Dynamic Boost. And then all we have to do is press OK on the balance mode there and then press OK again. And then Park Control will basically create a service and this will be applied every time you start this Parallels Windows ARM. The next thing we're going to do is change the startup options. So Windows will by default start up with lots of applications. And what we want to do is prevent that from happening so that we have access to the maximum number of resources. Press the keys Control Shift Escape to bring up the task manager and then click the startup tab and see if anything is enabled that shouldn't be. So generally speaking, we can just disable all of them and that should be pretty safe. In the case of Overwatch, we don't even need Battle.net Launcher to be enabled because we're going to launch Overwatch without the Battle.net Launcher. So the next thing we're going to do is disable the Parallels Memory Controller. And this is something which Elegant Cantaloupe is saying will improve the memory management of the game. So all we have to do is go into Device Manager. So what you can do is click on the Start menu, then type in the word Device, click on Device Manager, and then we'll go down into the System Devices. And once we've selected Parallels Memory Controller, we can click the red button to uninstall this driver. So this is something that we can actually reverse by reinstalling the Parallels tools into the Windows ARM operating system, but uh, we can remove this for now to improve our memory management. So the next step is to disable animations and other fancy effects that we don't need in the Windows interface. And to do that, we just click on the Start menu, type in Advanced, click on Advanced System Settings, and then we go into the Performance Settings section and then click on Adjust for Best Performance. And then we click OK. So the next thing we're going to do is disable the Windows page file. So what we do is we click on Start menu, type Performance, and then we go to the Advanced section here, go to the Virtual Memory, click Change, and then we're going to disable automatically manage and then set the setting to no paging file. So the opening poster is saying that this particular fix has quite an effect for Overwatch, but we don't know what it has on other games. So just be careful with this setting. So the next thing we're going to do is to disable Windows Defender, which is your antivirus software. If you click on start and then Windows Security, then we go to the virus and threat protection section. And then we click on Manage Settings. We want to disable all of these settings. So the most important one is the tamper protection one because that will re-enable the Windows Defender at some point in the future. But basically, if we just turn everything off, then that will be the safest thing. We don't really need antivirus when we're running a virtual machine. So to make sure Windows Defender doesn't come back, we need to edit the group policy. So just type Edit Group Policy into the Start menu. 
and then we're going to navigate to the administrative templates section and then we're going to select turn off Microsoft Defender antivirus. So what we'll do is we'll edit this particular setting and we want to leave this one enabled. So we're enabling the disabling of the antivirus software and this is going to prevent it from turning back on hopefully. So just make sure all of these things are turned off and then we should be good to go. The last thing I'm going to do is something very specific to Overwatch. I'm going to use the low-end config from the Low Spec Gamer. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description and we're just going to copy this into our Overwatch config file to kind of disable as many shadows and other visual effects that we can so that we can free up as much performance for the actual gameplay itself. I will leave a link in the description for these config files and where to place them. So we've now completed all of our automations on Windows and all that remains is to run our script. So you might think that this would be enough just to run Overwatch with a less bloated Windows, but it's not quite enough. We need this script for this to work. And this script is quite aggressive. It removes a lot of things, even the interface of Windows itself. So all you need to do is to click on the link in the article, and then we're going to go to the Windows ARM scripts and download the zip file for the actual code itself. I'm actually gonna put this file onto my desktop and that's because that's how the codes are run. What I'm gonna do now is to open up PowerShell and prepare the script. So just type in PowerShell into the start menu, right click and run as administrator. That will give a elevated privilege PowerShell. And then what we're gonna do is to copy and paste this command. This is gonna give us the ability to execute any kind of command that we want in PowerShell. Just press A and then continue. So then we're going to copy and paste the next command, which is just CD desktop, which is changing the folder to our desktop. Then we're going to paste the actual script command here, and we're going to put it into our parallels window. So I'm just going to check the actual script itself. Those first few lines are all just disabling different Windows services. And what this is going to do when this launches is shut everything down, including the interface and then automatically launch Overwatch from the default directory. And because this is the only time that we can actually change what game launches, this is a really good moment to actually make a snapshot of your virtual machine on your Mac operating system. So this is because we can easily revert back to this state that's kind of like a save state in an emulator. We want to come back to this later, just in case we want to switch games in the future or tweak some settings, because kind of after we initiate this script, it's going to put Windows in this permanent state where it only launches Overwatch and doesn't even launch the shell or the start menu or anything like that, or it won't even load Battle.net again. So we might need to do something or tweak something in the future, re-download a patch, something like that. We want that safe state there to be safe. So once we press enter on the command, all we need to do is press R and enter, and then this virtual machine will restart and then it will load straight into Overwatch itself. So it might take a few seconds for this to actually work because it's going to just restart the Windows operating system. Then it's going to load, or actually not load any of the services. It's gonna load Overwatch straight away like this. And because we are not logged into battle.net, it's gonna ask us to actually re-log in from scratch. So we want to log into our battle.net account from Overwatch. I'm just going to log in now. So I'm just going to show you what settings I'm running the game at. I'm running it at a kind of a half resolution of 1080p and I've basically turned most of the settings quite far down. I very much want to see the fluidity of the game running as close to you know 60 frames per second as possible. I think that's more important than having visual fidelity. I'm going to turn everything that's not necessarily off like anti-aliasing and we're just going to hit apply and then I'm going to show you a little bit of gameplay. So this is a real quick play online match with real people. And as you can see, the gameplay looks pretty fine to me. It's definitely playable and it's certainly much, much better than it was before. I'd say that you could probably have fun with this. I'd say that it's probably better than the Switch port of this game. It's obviously not competitive. I wouldn't play any ranked gaming with this, but as a kind of thing that you might enjoy uh, as a, on a casual basis, I think that this works very well. And it's especially good considering how much emulation and virtualization is happening here. This is an x86 64-bit application being emulated on an ARM operating system, which is being virtualized on the M1 Apple Silicon ARM chip. And this is a chip running at around 10 watts in power on the cheapest, lowest end M1 Apple Silicon Mac, which is the MacBook Air, which is a computer which has no fan. 
So when you're done actually playing your game and you want to quit out into the Windows operating system, what you'll find is that because we've disabled the interface, we can't actually do anything with the computer at all. There's no start menu. All we can do is load the task manager with the control shift escape, and we can run things from there, but we won't get our classic Windows shell back. And uh, I'm not really sure what the best way to actually manage this would be. So at the moment, what we're saying is that we should use the snapshot feature to go back and then we'll get our shell re-enabled. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a better way to to do this. I'm not a PowerShell scripting expert. I'm sure that there's a more user-friendly way of bringing games optimizations in and out without having to use the snapshot feature. But uh, anyway, this is very much a work in progress. So if you have any suggestions about how to make this more user-friendly, then please get in touch. Please come to our Discord. Please make some suggestions about how to make this a little bit easier to use. So in order to switch back, we just click the snapshot button on the control center of our virtual machine. And then we'll be given a selection of our snapshots that we've created. So what we're gonna do is select the one that we created right before we enabled our PowerShell script. So what we want to do is to right click or control click on the snapshot and click go to snapshot. And then we're gonna select not to save the previous version of the save state. And then we'll be taken back to exactly where we were before we initiated the script. So at this stage, I've got the script open and it's going to open Overwatch if I let this script run as it is, but I could easily change this to a different game. I will be testing other games as we go on. I'm going to probably try Grand Theft Auto V next. I want to try other games too, but this is not a particularly user-friendly way, as I mentioned before. If you do have any suggestions about how to improve this, I really would appreciate knowing a better way to make this more user-friendly. I'm going to leave all of the information in this video in this Parallels article on Apple Gaming Wiki. There'll be a link in the description. This will contain all of our future research. And if this process improves, then it'll be written up here. This is also the website where we keep all of the Parallels games compatibility listings. So if you want to know about games that work on Parallels, and we now have hundreds of games listings on there, so please check it out. We also have a discount code on the Parallels virtual machine software. If you use the code or follow the link, then you'll be helping us out as we'll receive a small cut of the final sale price. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you made use of it and that you did find it useful in some way. I feel like this is a start of some kind of optimization for parallels on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. It's not quite there yet for general mainstream usage, but it is very encouraging to see that certain competitive online shooters like Overwatch can actually be played on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and that I hope that we come up with some kind of solution to make this even easier to use and that we can launch all the other games that are kind of borderline playable like Grand Theft Auto 5 and that we can get Grand Theft Auto 5 multiplayer to work. If you do try this system out and you do find other games work better, please leave a comment, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tech video.